So my project yesterday in the garden was to tackle this rose hedge. I get all my flowers for my paintings from this rose hedge, but it has been attacked and plagued by black spot. So I'm going to, after cuddling my dog, obviously, I'm going to transform it into this and try and cut it back and deal with the black spot. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to delay too many flowers and re reduce the number of flowers too much this year. But frankly, you know, it had to be tackled. There's a reason behind why it got neglected. And um, of course, when you tackle anything like this, you, you just realise you have so many more jobs than you thought. All right, so how did I tackle the black spot? First, let me show you a picture of the rose hedge. Um, it's about eight roses long and it has, it's all David Austin roses. Just so fragrant and just so beautiful. And they were really um, black spot free until I ordered one from a disreputable gardening company online. And they sent me a diseased rose purporting to be a David Austin rose. It wasn't and it was riddled with disease. And for some reason I hung on to it thinking I could revive it. And it just ended up infecting all my roses. Just go back a minute. I forgot to say, I also had some warm water with some bleach in it so that I could sterilize my secateurs um, between each rose. Um, so that I wasn't transferring any diseases. I mean, they're all diseased, but I thought it better to be uh, take precaution. So I was sterilizing and wiping the blades with some kitchen roll between each rose. Okay, let's get back to the video. Um, so that combined with a back injury from a car accident meant that my rose hedge got completely neglected. Having said that, it still produced beautiful flowers, but it, after the first flush, the black spot would just come and the leaves would start to diminish and the roses would lose their fragrance, any new roses that came along, and they would be small and, and they wouldn't be that, that attractive really compared to what they can be. So here you can see I'm chopping the rose right down to the bold shape that is the traditional shape because you want the air to get in through the stems here to create good healthy airflow and then you click you cut where the node is facing outwards to continue that bowl shape outwards you don't want the stems coming in at each other and crossing each other and where they rub they create disease and injury um, so that's what I'm doing. I had to do that with all the roses and I started off basically by cutting just basically about a foot off all of them because they were all too tall and they hadn't been managed properly. So, and then I just started ripping away at these weeds that were underneath. Um, so there's another one, uh, going out and I, I wanted to keep them all about the same height. And I think there was about, I have about eight. So, yeah, so there you are. You see all those nodes are pointing outwards so that um, the flow of the bush will be out, the shrub. And this this was a good, took me a good deal of time because I hadn't done it for probably two years due to uh, my back being just making it impossible for me to do this. So I already knew that to prevent the spores sort of reforming back on the coming back up on the leaves especially in windy days like this and I thought I knew I had to have a layer at least you know four inches thick on the soil below. You can see how much work I've still got to do here on the soil below to prevent the spores coming up, any spores that had fallen on the floor. So all the cuttings from these roses had to go in, They I either burnt them or they have gone, that ash by the way is from the indoor fire, not from burning the um, cu uh, um, cuttings, cut-offs, whatever you, <laughs> I can't think, um, because I wouldn't put those back on. 
uh, they've all gone out actually in my recycling bin, uh, garden waste recycling bin. So they've gone. They're out the garden now. Then there's a little robin. I, I want to talk about wildlife gardening in another video, organic gardening. It's so important to have a healthy garden. I know this probably looks messy, but it is actually an extremely healthy garden. My garden is full of wildlife and I will talk about that in another video because I don't want to get distracted right now. Um, so I ha obviously you have to discard of all the cuttings, leaves, anything from the rows. Don't allow that to lay on the ground beneath the rose. You must dispose of it away. Don't put it on your compost heap, whatever you do. It's full of disease. So you don't want it anywhere near your garden. So you put it in your weight recycling waste bin like I have done here, or you can burn it or whatever. Um, that's the only way you can do it. So that's that bit done. So I cut them all back like this, cleared the undergrowth and... Um, the next thing I wanted to do was create some sort of organic fungicide to treat the plant. Now, I thought about using bleach and I thought, no, because that's not really organic. Don't want, I'm always thinking about the insects underneath. They're such an essential part of uh, garden health and soil health. Um, so I don't want to harm those critters or the birds who will later come along maybe and peck on them and have them for supper so um always mindful of that so i had a good think about it i was thinking about vinegar and apple cider vinegar and all these different things and then i just thought oh i'll google it <laughs> so i googled um organic fungicide for black spot and it seemed to suggest on many different websites that bicarbonate of soda was a, a good uh, organic fungicide with a bit of um what's it called uh, vegetable oil so that's what i did so i read a few different articles on it and sort of extrapolated my own kind of um recipe from it and for two gallons of water which is your sort of average sized watering can I used four tablespoons of bicarbonate soda and a tablespoon of olive sunflower oil, but vegetable oil, any vegetable oil, which I just threw in. I, I, I measured the bicarbonate soda roughly and then I eyeballed the olive oil, uh, sunflower oil and just stirred it all around. And then I poured it over the roses and the area beneath the rose. And one can really almost did them all, but I did have to go back and make up another can of uh, the solution. And, I, you know, I went all over. I wanted to get in the tips where I'd made the cuttings in particular to sort of sanitise those vulnerable areas and the ground where the spores, you know, could rise back up where the, I may have missed some um uh, hopefully, I probably will do this treatment again. I've no idea whether it will work. All I know is this is the best treatment these roses have had in two years. So something's got to work. Because even when they were mistreated, they did flower beautifully. It's just they lost their leaves. And when you're doing floral displays, as I do, um, the, le the glossy leaves of a rose are extremely beautiful. And if you haven't got them because they're you have to snip them off because they've got black spot or they've curled up and died you know you're having to root around them for other foliage and it you know i just love rose i love the foliage of roses actually so i i, I and i i just don't like the way it looked half dead with these kind of roses on the end of it so the next job was to then put on the layer the barrier that would feed the roses, give them a good mulch and also prevent any remaining fungicide uh, spores, black spot spores. If I haven't got them, I'm going to bury them and also the weeds as well whilst feeding the roses at the same time. Now, I had some reservations because I couldn't use, we're in between horses at the moment, so we didn't have our own horse manure. So I actually had to go and rely on somebody else's horse manure. Uh, it was well rotted, but I had an extremely paranoid moment that they might have used diatomaceous earth, 
which is death to insects. I don't know why it's touted as an organic solution for um, uh, garden care and vet care, animal care. It's really quite damaging to the environment in my view. So I was concerned about that, but we'll just have to see. I, I've used it anyway. I kind of already committed to it. And it was as I was raking it out that I started to have reservations that I perhaps should have been a bit more inquiring about um, the horses, what they were fed, what worming treatment they'd had and so on and so forth. But it's well rotted. So hopefully anything damaging may have worked itself out of this compost so what i didn't like also there was a heavy amount of straw in it so i did cover that with more compost to sort of blend it in a bit better so there it is i i didn't film myself um raking it around because well i couldn't do both <laughs> so um there it is that's the comp uh the sorry the horse manure and i did sprinkle some compost just to try and cover over that straw a bit i i may underplant this this year i'm still thinking about that i've heard that salvia is very good at dealing with black spot as well i think perhaps the denseness of the shrub of the salvia shrub might prevent the spores rising up from the ground apparently it has uh, some black spot combating um, abilities so we'll see and I do love salvia so I think they could look really nice but I'm not quite sure that it's sunny enough for salvia there obviously I'll give you an update on how they work and I probably as I say will treat them again with the black spot maybe as the first uh, leaves start to emerge I'll try the solution again just to be on the safe side I don't know but I really want to bring this uh, rose hedge back to its former glory in an organic, wildlife and insect friendly way. So I'll give you an update on how it goes. And in the meantime, I'm going to play you out with the evening song of the birds with my fire pit burning those rose offcuts. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please subscribe and click the notification bell on the like button. And I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.